Welcome back to the shop. This is Jacob with the wood plank. Today I'm making a custom tree swing made out of ash, sapile, and Brazilian cherry. Honestly, I didn't have any definitive build plans for this. I made a few sketches and I knew what the overall dimensions were going to be, which are four feet long, 21 inches on the bottom, 21 inches on the back. These are the uprights that will go on the back of the swing. The shape is loosely taken from a cookbook stand I recently built. If you're interested in funny infomercials and cookbook stands, I'll link that video in the description below. I knew I wanted to use a lap joint to connect the base section and the back together. So I moved over to the table saw and got to work. Ash is an excellent species of wood to work with. It's a sibling to oak. It's a little less expensive than some of the other hardwoods out there, and it takes stain extremely well. Although in this project, we're going to go all natural. These are some wider boards I've been holding on to. They really have some exceptional grain. After those pieces were sanded and planed, I had an idea of reusing some of my leftover brickboard cutoffs and incorporating it into the bench somehow. No scrap left behind. After everything was cut to width, it was time for the first test fit. And I'm really happy with the way this is coming along, especially since this is mostly just a freestyle build. I wanted to make this a clean joint right here, so I got my really expensive protractor out and made a few cuts. I was struggling to come up with an idea for the armrest. I had a bunch of sketches, but none of them felt right. So after a short hike and an impromptu lunch with my two buddies, I came back to the shop and sketched out this tree. I decided to build this section out of Brazilian cherry, also known as jatoba. It's an extremely hard wood and ranks at 2350 on the Janka scale. That's twice as hard as walnut. And it's an excellent choice for outdoor projects. One of the main reasons why I enjoy woodworking so much is as I'm cutting out this tree, I'm thinking just a few minutes ago, this was just an idea, but here I'm turning it into a reality. And with wood, you can pretty much turn anything that you can imagine into a real thing. And custom work is really and truly what I love doing the most. I 
I used a small round over bit to profile the edges of the tree. And the sections that I couldn't reach with the router, I just used a really sharp razor knife and uh, shaped everything in. This is the shape I came up with for the armrest. I knew I wanted the chain to go through it. And as a little extra stability, I made this notch on the back, which will rest on the back side of the bench. I'll show you how this goes together shortly. I wanted to soften all the edges with a little round over bit and then it was time for test fit number two. I still needed to figure out how I was going to attach all these different parts, which I didn't want to see screws from the top of the bench so I knew that pocket holes were going to be the answer for this problem. I also didn't like the way the top of the bench had a straight line so I ended up making a little curve as you can see right there. There's going to be a lot of stress, weight, and pressure at this joint. I added some screws and some glue, and when everything was dry, this was an extremely strong part of the bench. After all the pocket holes were drilled, it was time for the final assembly. I used bolts to secure this section of the armrest. And to attach the top section of the armrest, I used these little figure eight fasteners, which turned out to be perfect for this job. I ended up adding this cross brace along the back. I cut it to mimic the design from the top piece.
For the finish on this bench, I'm using a 70% teak oil, 30% spar urethane combination. In my experience with exterior finishes, you want to have as much of the wood absorbing in the finish as possible. If you were to use 100% spar urethane, it would just turn into like a clear coat and start to flake off. So by diluting that with the teak oil, it now absorbs into the wood and really just builds up a protective layer. It's very durable and long lasting. What I'll do is apply a pretty liberal amount, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then wipe it all off. By doing this, you're going to get good saturation and a nice smooth finish. I applied three coats and used steel wool in between each one. Finally, I applied a hard wax and buffed everything out. I have a little campsite on my property that I've slowly been adding to over the years. I'll be sharing more on the campsite in an upcoming video, but it's a space I created to offer to folks to get back to nature, get outside, and hopefully find a little tranquility in the woods. There are these two big poplar trees that I've always felt like needed a swing in between them. And that's where this is gonna go. I tossed around a few ideas on how I should hang the swing. Eventually I went with a four by six with two stop blocks underneath it. I used six 10 inch lags and bolted everything in place. Note to self, enjoy the moment, reflect, keep the vision alive, embrace those times lost in the wilderness, growth happens in the underbrush, keep trekking forward, bring the best out of those around you, pay attention to your weaknesses, but focus on your strengths, actions speak louder than words. Discover your divinely appointed gifts and explore all you're capable of. Until next time, take care from the wood plank.